I have several projects that use RS-485, including this telephone central office simulator and this solenoid or other low side driver board that has RS-485 as an option to control this. And I've got one USB to RS-485 transceiver that I've been sharing between projects. I bought that on Amazon a while ago, but I need multiple interfaces, so I decided it's time I just design one with help from today's sponsor, PCB Way. And because I'm trying to migrate everything to USB-C connectors to make it standard for me, I'm using a USB Type-C connector on this board, but I'm only using it in regular USB 2 mode, so I have data plus and minus, and then power ground. And there's also two pull-down resistors needed in case it's plugged into a USB Type-C port instead of a USB 2 port, depending what kind of USB Type-C cable is used and what it ends up plugging into. And to convert the USB into TTL UART, I'm using a CH340E because it has a special output control called T now, which goes high when it's transmitting out. And then we have the MAX485 transceiver to do the differential RS-485 communications. And this chip has to manually be set in transmit or receive mode, which is why I chose specifically the CH340E. Starting out looking at the USB Type-C interface requirements, the USB-C receptacle has a lot of pins on it, so if you plug it in one way or you then plug it in upside down, you'll still have the grounds and the V-bus all in the same position, as well as the data plus, data minus, they'll land in the right place. Then you've got some other unique signals, including the configuration channel 1 and 2, which help detect which way the cable is plugged in based on pull up or pull down resistors on the circuit. And those pins are also used in determining what kind of device is plugged in, what capabilities it'll have. But for this purpose, I'm just using this in USB 2 mode. So I only care about data plus and minus and VBUS and ground. But I still need to put a pull down resistor 5.1K to ground on CC1 and on CC2. And I'm going to wire both data pluses together on the connector and both data minuses together to treat them as one data plus data minus pair. Then I can just use it as a regular USB interface. So here's basically how that looks. From the connector, I have data plus and data minus coming out into my CH340 USB to UART. And I have a 5.1K pull down on each of these CC pins. And that's all I need to do for USB 2 mode. If I were to do USB 3 stuff, it may start getting complicated. And here's the info on the CC pin pull down resistors. For USB 2 mode, there's really not much to look into, but I'll include links to any of the info I found while I was researching how to set this up. So there's the design with the USB-C receptacle. And there's different kinds of USB-C connectors. If you don't need all of those pins, like in this case, there's connectors with less pins, so I just have the usual V bus and ground. I connected data minus together and data plus together, so there's my regular USB data. The two CC pins have a 5.1K pull down to keep the USB C system happy. Then it's just a regular circuit. The CH340E provides a UART for TX and RX. It also has CTS and RTS flow control signals. I just put those on test points. And there's the T now. So we are transmitting now when this goes high. So we're transmitting out of here into the data in of the MAX 485. So because we do want to enable the transmitter on the 485, when we are transmitting out of the 340 into the 485 chip, this driver enable is active high. So connecting it straight to T now turns on the driver when we are transmitting. And when we're not transmitting, we're just idle. So this will be in receive mode. T now is low. So that disables the driver and enables the receiver. So data can come in, go straight to the USB CH340 to get transmitted out that way. And it just automatically takes care of itself. Otherwise, these 
driver and receiver enables have to be controlled some other way, so this chip just makes it all automatic. I have a power LED, transmit and receive LEDs, and there's a 120 ohm terminating resistor across the data pins, which is used on each far end of an RS-485 connection. And since this board is just a USB transceiver, I would expect this to be at one end of a chain, so I did terminate this, and there's no way to disable it unless the resistor is removed. But if I had other RS-485 devices hanging off the bus, and then some other final RS-485, those in the middle would not want a terminator on them. And the pins are just copied over here in case I wanted to hook up by DuPont wires instead of screw terminals. So to test this out, I've got two different copies of Cool Term open. So I'll take this store-bought USB to 485 transceiver and plug it in. So it's got power. And now if I say this first Cool Term is going to be assigned to that serial port, right now I have to re-scan the serial ports because I just plugged it in. And there's the Scilabs virtual serial port. I'm just using standard settings here and we're communicating at 115.2k. So I will OK that. And over in the other window, if I want to configure this, here's the newly designed USB to RS-485 board, and it's wired up with data plus and minus to the USB store-bought RS-485 board. And I've got it plugged into this USB-C cable that goes to a USB 2 port. Plug that in, and USB never goes right the first way, which is why we like USB-C. There we go. Now it's got a power light on. This is the entire test setup. So now I rescan the serial ports. I just plugged that one in, and it's this CH340 virtual serial port. Same data rate, so I'll OK this one. Now I will connect both of them. And if I start over in the store-bought one, and I just start typing, it showed up over here on the receiving side, which is the circuit I just made. Maybe I should turn on local echo so I can see what I'm typing. Okay. It may be hard to see the quick blinking. I'm going to transmit out of this one into this one. So there's a very quick flash here and over here. And at the same time, we can see here the transmit software light is coming on and the receive software light is coming on here. If I click over into this terminal, so this one should start transmitting and this one's receiving. So this seems to work fine. It's a relatively straightforward, simple circuit, but I easily need three or four of these things right about now, so it made sense to design one, especially to migrate away from USB mini or micro.